In this video, we are going to be looking at income determination. Income determination refers as how income and how truth is determined in uh, an economy. And today, we are going to be looking at income determination in two sector model. And you know, when we talk about two sector model, we are looking at two um, different participants. That is, two sector model is, is, is a kind of economy whereby there are just two um, major participants, namely the household and the firms. Now, the income of the household can be written as income equals consumption plus saving. It means that household, household, what is going to do with the income? You can use it for two things. You consume part of it, then you save the remaining. Now, then for the for the invest for the firms, the second participants, so the income will become C plus high. It means the consume part of it and the other, this is the consumption for the investment and this is the investment. So the income, when it is written Y equals C plus I, it refers to the firm's income function. Then this is the household income function. And this is what we refer as supply, aggregate supply. And this is aggregate demand. What is, why is this aggregate supply? The household income function is aggregate supply because why this is consumed, the remaining one which is saving, that is supply of money. The supply is put it in the financial institution and financial institution give it to the investors. Then why is this aggregate demand? This is aggregate demand because it demands for the money. Demand for the money is you know, given to bank by, by households. So this supply money, this demand for money. So that is why we say this is aggregate supply and this is aggregate demand. Aggregate demand. Having understood this now, so we can simply write that Y, we can say, let's, let's put it like this, C plus S, which is the income, which is the income function of household, equals income function of the firm, which is C plus I. Don't forget, the income revolves around you know it revolves between firms and household you can go back to our video on on circular flow of income of two sector model then you will understand what we are talking about when that the, the when the income is revolving so the consumption plus s equals c plus i here so the equilibrium is achieved this is cancelled away they have s equals i why do i cancel this i can simply make it to be c the C here plus here become minus C here plus S here equals I. This one cancel out this. So I'm going to be having I'm going to be having S equals I. That is why I said that S equals I. So this is the point of equilibrium. We are saving equals investment. It means the supply equals demand. The supply of money by the household equals the supply of money equals to the demand of money by the. Uh, investment that by the firms. Now, how can we represent this in graph? Let's, this is how is determined, this is how income is determined in the uh, uh, two sector model. But let's show it graphically to understand it clearly. Now, because we are dealing with two, two participants here, I can draw my graph this way. So, I'll be making this as income. Yeah. Now, this is 90 degree, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. And we need to divide it into two. Because we want to see, we are looking at equilibrium. And when you are looking at equilibrium, it means there must be a point of intersection. And not to be partial, we need to give them the equal chance. So this is the equal, equal, equality side. Now, we make it 45 degree, and that is our supply of money. Don't forget that this is our origin, zero. And our consumption is going to start, which is autonomous consumption. It's going to start even when income is zero. Because man needs to live even though he doesn't pay. So that is why it's going to be, we are going to have the intercept of consumption here. And it's going to continue growing as the income moving. So this is our C. Let's make it C. Now. But what about the demand for money? 
Now, our investment, since we have C, we consume. When we consume, then we save. And that saving should be in our investment. That is why we need to have investment. So, to have our investment, we add I to this consumption. So, having high can be from consumption now to the high. So, we can add our high C plus I. So, that is our demand. Which this is for the household, this is for the Fed. If you see from C, from C here to here, is what we had our high. So this can be our high here. Now, the equality of the supply and demand is attained here. So we can draw it down to give us our output, to determine our output, this is GDP. Then we make it our Y. We can say Y. So our GDP level now is from 0 to 1 at the initial stage. 0 to 1 at the initial stage. Why is it 0 to 1? Let me quickly tell you this. Our disposable income, you know the meaning of disposable income? The, the, the disposable income here, it does not mean after deduction of tax. You know, when you say this disposable income, it means the, the income, the personal income left after deduction of tax. But here, our disposable income here equals to national income. Why do it equals our national income? Because there is no tax in this economy. It means the whole of income, the whole of income here will all, always equal to the income we can dispose. Now, our disposable income here is from Y. Disposable income, our YD, at this stage now, is from Y. I can make this one, uh, uh, let me say is P. P is from is Y P. From here to here is our disposable income. But if you look at the disposable income, are we consuming all of this disposable income? You can see from this point now to this point. Let's say T. T. We are that is what we are consuming. Because when you take it up, when you stop, you, you intercept the consumption. That is the level of the consumption. You can see the level of consumption here. So it means our consumption, our consumption here is Y. T. Now, Y T. It means the remaining disposable income from this point to this point is what we save. Is what we save. We consume from Y to T, then we save from T to S. And you will see that from, from T to P, you will see that what we save now equals what we invest. What we save here. We consume our disposable income, we consume from this point to this point. And the remaining one to make the disposable income complete, we save it. And the portion here, the portion here, equals to the portion here which we invest. So this is the equality now. That is the equality. That is out of graph X. Now, there can, this is the equilibrium point. You can see. Demand equals supply. The money saved equals the money invested by the firms. Now, to proceed now, when we have this equilibrium, when we have this equilibrium, it could be a situation whereby the supply is greater than demand. But when supply is greater than demand, we can have something like this. Then this can be Y, let's say Y2. Y, Y2. Now, for the Y2, the disposable income is from, for the second level, this is the first level, for the second level now, that is the C equilibrium point, the second stage, the disposable income is from, the disposable income is from Y2 to, let's say, M, Y2 to M, from this point to this point, this is our disposable income, that is the money in the heart of individuals. But, how much do they consume? They consume from this point to this point. Let's say this is this is F. So consumption is from Y to F. So what I put to the remaining income from this point to this point? So it means that what do they do here? They save. They save their saving now equals from F to M. That's what they save. You see, they save from F to M, which the saving, saving here, is greater than demand. 
Because when you look at the demand, demand stops here. Demand stops here. Demand stops here. And we can see the we can see the, the, the supply. See the difference between demand and supply. So the difference between demand and supply, I can say K. You see, from year to year, we have our our demand, our investment. But supply of money is greater than the investment. So where supply of money is greater than investment, it means that consumption, people are not, they are not consuming as, as, as higher as before. They are not consuming well. Because they are not consuming well, that they save larger portion of their money. When they save larger portion of their money, that is why the difference between, you can see the savings from here, consumption, from year to year is consumption. Then savings from F to M. Then demand, the demand for the, the, the investment rather is FK. The investment is investment is from F to K. You can see that is investment FK, FK. But look at look at look at uh, savings. Savings is from F to M, F to M. So I can simply say that savings FM is greater than which is supply savings is greater than investments investments so it's greater than fk fk when savings is greater than investment it means what is going to happen you are saving you are saving you don't consume what investors are producing then what is going to happen to the investors investors will naturally reduce their production but when they reduce the production level that will lead to what that will lead to Unemployment because they have to retrain so many people so that they can be able to meet up with the payments. So, when they retrain so many people, what will happen to the money income of those people in the household? The income, the aggregate income in the household will fall. So, when it falls, when the aggregate income falls, you see, it's going to come down back to this point. So the, the normal situation is restored now. The equilibrium is data attained. So that is the self-adjustment of the, uh, uh, the economy. That is the forces that readjust the economy. That is the forces that readjust the economy. Please subscribe and get more of our video. Thank you.